Welcome to this video in the evolution series. In particular, this video is going to be looking at two dot points from the Life on Earth syllabus. The first one being 8.4.1a, gather information from secondary sources to describe the experiments of Yuri and Miller and use the available evidence to analyze the reason for their experiments, the results of their experiments, the importance of their experiments in illustrating the nature and practice of science, and the contribution to hypotheses about the origins of life. Also, we'll be looking at dot point 8.4.1 uh, number four, which is discuss the significance of the Urey and Miller experiments in the debate on the composition of the primitive atmosphere. So how did the first living things get started on the primitive earth? So the idea was that it was chemicals first and then cells. We think that the atmosphere of the primitive earth contained exactly the same elements that the chemicals of life are made from, mainly carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. In the 1920s, it was suggested by two scientists independently who were known as Opiron and Haldane that maybe the conditions on earth 4, point, uh, 4 billion years ago, sorry, firstly caused the chemical reactions that made complex organic molecules then these complex organic molecules somehow came together to form living cells. And then once life got started, it evolved into all the species in the fossil record and alive today. So how do Urey and Miller fit into this? So in the 1950s, Harold Urey and his student Stanley Miller carried out experiments to test Aparin and Haldane's hypothesis. And basically, this has become one of the most famous experiments in the history of biology because it was able to actually experimentally test the hypothesis that the chemicals that existed on early Earth were able to form life. So this here shows the setup that Oparin, oh, sorry, uh, Yuri and Miller had in their laboratory. So as you can see, it is actually made up of fairly simple equipment that you would find in most standard laboratories today. So what we had was, starting over here, we had a round bottom flask that had water in it. So this was to represent the ocean. So initially they placed pure water into this flask and they heated it with something similar to a Bunsen burner, which promoted evaporation of the water. So the heat obviously was to represent the heat in the atmosphere because there was no ozone layer stopping uh, the radiation from the sun. So as the water evaporated, the vapors headed up this chamber here and into this chamber at the top here. So this chamber here was designed to represent the atmosphere of early Earth. So uh, Yuri and Miller placed a number of gases in there, in particular water vapor, which came from the evaporation of water in our ocean flask, uh, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen gas, which as we've already said, we know were present during uh, early Earth. Also, they had electrodes that created electrical sparks, which were there to simulate the lightning strikes that were happening all the time. Uh, and as it was believed that the um, electricity and the energy produced by the lightning helped to change the arrangement of the atoms in order to produce the different substances. Then what happened was, as those gases reacted, Okay, the gases then pass through this condenser. So a condenser is a tube that is surrounded by cold water. And because the water is cold, the gases then condense back into a liquid form. <coughs> Sorry. And then at the bottom of the apparatus, you can see that, that there was a trap. So it was just a shallow area of the apparatus where organic compounds, including sugars and amino acids, which we know are the basic chemicals of life were found. This video here just explains in a little bit more detail and a little bit more visually what exactly took place. The researchers then added water, hydrogen gas, methane, carbon dioxide, ammonia and nitrogen. The water was heated to form a vapor and electrical sparks were generated to mimic lightning. This apparatus simulated the possible conditions of the early Earth. When the water was analyzed after one week, 
they found simple carbon compounds such as formaldehyde and hydrogen cyanide. These compounds then combine to produce formic acid, urea, and amino acids. In similar experiments carried out over the next several years, various organic compounds have been synthesized. These experiments showed that simple organic compounds, including the building blocks of proteins and other macromolecules, could be formed from gases present in the primitive atmosphere with the input of electrical energy. So the initial experiments resulted in the production of sugars and amino acids and later variations produced the chemical building blocks for cell membranes and even DNA. So this supports the first part of Opiron and Haldane's hypothesis that the chemicals of life could have appeared spontaneously on the primitive earth. So what is the support that's around for Urien and Miller's experiments? So people have conducted similar experiments to Urien and Miller's and they've been able to provide a similar outcome each time. Some other scientists have also replicated the experiments by modifying uh, it to use lightning, in, sorry, ultraviolet light instead of lightning in order to produce the amino acids because as we know, there was a huge amount of ultraviolet radiation. So by changing that input of energy, we still had the same outcome. The result of other experiments indicate that the building blocks of life could have originated on primitive earth, changing from inorganic molecules to organic molecules, and this was a significant first step in the evolution of life on Earth. Now, obviously, there's also going to be some debate against the experiments from different fields, as as we know, different people have different ideas on the origins of life. It is now believed that the atmosphere did not contain any free hydrogen, which, as we know, was one of the gases that they included in their apparatus. Geological evidence of an oxidising atmosphere rather than a reducing atmosphere existed to show that there must have been some kind of free oxygen somewhere in the atmosphere. This also ties in with the fact that some evidence suggests that there were low levels of oxygen 2.1 billion years ago and some argued that although lightning storms were common they did not occur continuously like they were in their experiment meaning that amino acids and organic compounds may only have formed in smaller quantities and not in the amount required to actually uh, form life. So what is the significance of Urien and Miller's experiments? So firstly, it demonstrates the way science works by formulating a hypothesis and then testing it by experiment. In this case, the hypothesis was put forward by other scientists 30 years before the experiment was actually done. Although it didn't prove how life got started on Earth, the experimental results support the hypothesis by showing that life-forming chemicals could have been produced naturally under the conditions of primitive Earth. In combination with evidence from space exploration, volcanology and Earth chemistry, ancient rocks and fossils, and the study of primitive life alive today, as well as other areas of scientific study, the Urien and Miller experiment is just one part of a package of evidence that seems quite consistent with the idea that life formed naturally on the primitive Earth some 4 billion years ago and has evolved into what we see today. We cannot prove how life arose, but the weight of the evidence suggests that we're on the right track. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.